With hip-hop's growing audience, the music genre is quickly becoming one in a long line of extremely popular music genres, created by African Americans and with a mostly black canon. Hip-hop shares many traits with those genres, like jazz and rock and roll, including that these genres then started massive music trends in their respective decades, and dictated what popular music sounded like during those trends. This can be seen when analyzing the history of hip-hop and its rise to popularity, and when observing how black youth are known to be trendsetters of popular culture, thus impacting and driving the popularity of hip-hop. This then connects to how this is a recognized feature of black culture in America, dating back to both the popularity of rock and roll music and its reign on popular music from the late 50s to the 70s, as well as further back to jazz music as America's first great art music genre, specifically the swing era and its hold on America in the 1930s. African American music and culture has been impacting music trends since the end of slavery. Hip-hop's ever-expanding audience reinforces that black youths and black art are trendsetters and dictate popular music trends in America. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. Hip-hop's surge in popularity is well documented. Hip-hop began in the Bronx in the 1970s, when black youth combined certain elements like DJing on a turntable, MCing, and b-boying or breakdancing to the music played by DJs at events referred to as parties as well as graffiti to both display the youth's new way of expressing themselves and their art, and to beautify the Bronx that was abandoned by New York City due to benign neglect. From the Bronx, hip-hop migrated all over America, to Philadelphia, to the West Coast, and the South, before having a hold on all geographic communities within America. The genre itself also expanded, from creating hip-hop recordings, to making hip-hop specifically for albums and creating lyrics for these songs with the intention to have people not just dance, but listen to the words being spoken. Rappers referred to as conscious rappers took care to convey specific messages about African American issues in America and implemented a depth to the genre that was originally intended to be just rhythmic talk talking over pre-existing songs. This spoke to the African-American community, and now a local genre of party music took a hold on African-American communities across America as a cultural phenomenon. Like with the conscious rappers and their care in making lyrics meaningful, other aspects of hip-hop was expanded on, including production styles, differences in geographical styles of hip-hop, i.e. West Coast, East Coast, etc and new subgenres of hip-hop, including gangster rap. With all these evolutions of the hip-hop genre, attention was brought to both white audiences and white critics. Hip-hop, and especially gangster rap, was heavily criticized because of cultural differences of not understanding how and why hip-hop and gangster rap was presented the way that it was. Whether it was critics not understanding gangster rap's satiric elements, or hip-hop's history of using samples to reference obscure or culturally important music. Nevertheless, this did not stop white audiences from consuming and enjoying hip-hop despite barriers in place to keep hip-hop out of the cultural mainstream, including but not limited to music charting methods before SoundScan implemented their point-of-sale charting practices and media campaigns to demonize certain popular gangster rap artists like Tupac. Once white audiences were on board, hip-hop exploded into the mainstream consciousness and to an international audience as well. Hip-hop still remains an extremely popular music genre and has influenced not just pop music from the early 2000s to present day, but also styles and culture around the world. From hip-hop's beginnings as a popular music genre among black youths in the Bronx, to a national and then international phenomenon, the black community birthed the prominent modern American pop culture feature of modern styles and aspects that come from hip-hop culture as well. This reflects a notable trend for black youth and how they influence American culture, as black youth are considered trendsetters and dictate what art, products, and styles will become popular for their generations. Ashley Williams, senior research analyst for CNR Research Group, confirms this, reporting, because blacks are younger on average, they're trendsetters and tastemakers for young consumers of all races. According to the Selig Center, they influentially define mainstream culture and wield immense influence over how Americans choose to spend their money. Any marketing campaign targeting millennials must include messages to reach African American youth. However, this is not a recent trend. There is historical precedence for black youth dictating American pop culture and the trends in music and style. In Bakari Kitwana's book, Why White Kids Love Hip Hop, Kitwana reaffirms this and states, what black youth are doing today other ethnic and racial groups will be doing, if not tomorrow, a bit later. Black kids have been trendsetters in youth culture for so long that this phenomenon is part of the fabric of American society. With many different cultural and music trends, 
Since black communities were able to indulge and openly perform their own culture and music, music genres created by African Americans have been influencing the popular music of the time, as well as the culture that defined those corresponding decades, such as rock and roll and the jazz age, specifically the swing era. Hip hop, while different from these genres, share many similarities that justifies this connection to being another American cultural moment defined by black youth influence. Looking at this timeline and the history of hip hop and its growth into a fully fledged genre, <laughs> There are some key similarities between the genre and other African American music genres, such as rock and roll and jazz. Because of these similarities, we can see that hip hop is a part of a cycle of American music genres being created by a canon of black artists, then becoming wildly popular and influencing music trends. Hip hop, rock and roll, and jazz all drew on pre existing African American and some African music traditions and genres that preceded. Like hip hop was influenced by funk, reggae, and other music genres from the 70s. Rock and roll and jazz were both influenced by old older African-American music genres like gospel and the blues. When these genres all emerged within their own right, after a time of being only popular within African-American circles, soon they started to interest white artists and then white audiences. Rock and roll is noticeable for setting up the reign of popularity that would come for white artists who perform rock music in the late 50s through the 70s. Williams reported that in the 1950s, rock and roll acts like Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Big Boy set the stage for mainstream non-Hispanic white music acts like The Beatles and Elvis Presley. However, it is also extremely notable that unlike hip hop, rock and roll has been heavily whitewashed to reflect a majority of white artists' contribution to the genre. This feature is even more evident when considering the irony of Elvis Presley nickname, the king of rock and roll, when he was simply the first wildly popular white rock and roll artist. Williams also noted this in her findings, and articulates that this irony comes from an understanding within the black community that when it comes to rock and roll, prestige is this time and again a misplaced on white artists over founding black artists. She reports that, in fact, within black culture, it is important to understand that some blacks show some feelings of resentment that black musicians weren't given the due credit for spearheading and pioneering specific music genres and sounds. While people who are familiar with the history of rock and even fans know of the black originators of the genre, because of rock and roll's massive popularity among white audiences, and especially because of the time of this popularity, these white rock and roll artists are still seen at the forefront of the genre's history and who the audience considers the greats. However, this is slightly different within the canon of iconic jazz artists who created, continued, and innovated the tradition. While audiences may recall the most famous white jazz vocalist when recalling the greats of the jazz tradition, like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, the black artists that also pioneered the genre such as Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, and Sammy Davis Jr., and many other black artists, are also within the forefront of the general public's memory, much more so than rock and roll. This is because in academia, one of the core tenets of the jazz tradition is that the canon of jazz artists is nearly completely black, even to the detriment of not mentioning some influential white artists. As stated by Scott DeVoe in his influential paper, Constructing the Jazz Tradition, Jazz Historiography. While at the time not given the notoriety that the black community warranted, the jazz era and swing era of the 1930s is now recognized as being created and intensely influenced by the black culture of music at the time in both academia and in the collective culture's diegesis. Perhaps considering the origins of jazz music coming from other African-American and African music genres, it may be a given that black jazz artists were the ones who started the swing era, the most popular jazz era. However, it cannot be overstated how black artists were able to persist during this period of the beginning of appropriation by white band leaders, economic factors like the Great Depression, and other reasons that constantly tested the hold black jazz artists had on their own medium. On the swing era, Louis Ehrenberg, in his book, Swinging the Dream, Big Band Jazz and the Rebirth of American Culture, introduces this idea by encapsulating how intense the swing genre was and how important black artists were to creating this intense artistic force. In the opening statement of the chapter, From Jazz to Swing, 1929 to 1935, he writes, the energy and creativity of the musical awakening to come derived from a number of important black bands who were able to synthesize the modern swing sound despite the depression's devastating effects on their livelihood. However, it was not the only music genre that black people influenced during the swing era of the 1930s in America, but also the clothing, the dancing, and the other aspects of what we would now consider 
as decade-defining features or pop culture. In Time magazine, Constance White writes on how African Americans influenced the style and culture of the decade by stating, Stateside and in parts of Europe in the early 20th century, band leaders like Cab Calloway popularized the dramatically baggy zoot suit. Jazz men and blues women started trends, as Billie Holiday did when she appeared with the flower in her hair. The 20s flapper style is said to have risen in part from the need to allow vigorous movement after black youth introduced an energetic new dance called the Charleston, which was then popularized on Broadway. Real hot girl shit. Like black youth influenced the popularity of hip hop, black youth and artists have been influencing other American music genres and culture since black communities started creating their own culture and styles and making their own music. African Americans have always influenced American culture, music, style, and hip hop is now the next wave of the black communities and artists influencing Americans once again. Understanding this is important to recognizing hip hop's significance, not just to the black community, but to American culture, as well as rightfully given African Americans credit for shaping American culture. Hip hop's ever expanding audience reinforce black youths and black art, are trendsetters and dictate popular music and style trends in America. This can be seen when analyzing the history of hip hop's rise to popularity and what it meant to black youth, and also when observing observing how black youth are known to be trendsetters of popular culture, thus impacting and driving the popularity of hip hop because of its popularity with black youth. This then connects to how this is a recognized and consistent lineage of black culture in America, dictating popular styles of music, dating back to both the popularity of rock and roll music and its reign on popular music in the late 50s and 70s, as well as further back to jazz music, specifically the swing era and its hold on America in the 1930s. African American music and culture has been impacting music trends since they were able to to freely create and openly indulge their own culture. And hip hop is another example of how important African American music is to American culture.